We're getting ready for UFC 109. The press conference just uh, finished up. So we're going to do our uh, breakdown of the card and picks a little bit early with uh, Yahoo's Kevin Ioli. Love the shirt. I don't think Shale, uh, Shale Sonnen will, but I love the shirt. I'm, I made a point. Uh, Shale talked about Anderson Silva wearing pink, and I said Anderson's not the only one that wears pink. All right. You are a real man. You're in it's touch with... It's raspberry, Steve. It's raspberry. Okay. Well, I'm colorblind, so it looks, uh, looks pink to me. Um, so what do you think of this card overall? I, I, I kind of like the card. You know, the more you look at all the fights, there's a, there's a lot of storylines all up and down the card. I think so, too. You know, I think it's an interesting card. I, I think one of the things we're starting to see now is that uh, they're coming back from that injury plague situation that they had. You know, 108 was probably the last card where they were really trash. You know, now guys are coming back. I think it's really going to kick in at UFC 110 in Australia. But I think right now, you know, we're starting to see some good fights. You know, the main event, some people are complaining about the main event, but you're talking about two Hall of Fame fighters, and, you know, Mark Coleman has got a point to prove. Randy Couture is obviously an elite fighter, so I think it's a, you know, I think it's a decent fight. I really like the middleweight fight, and I, I think overall, you know, they're now starting to go back in the direction. The guys are coming back, and this is the first of those cards. Couture Coleman, uh, you took issue with Dana White kind of chiding the media, saying that people keep writing off Randy Couture. You don't get that, huh? I don't. I mean, I went back and looked at what I've written. I look at what other people have written. Who is writing off Randy Couture? We're all saying Randy Couture is one of the all-time greats. He's one of this. You know, even if you look at his record, what is he, 3-3 three and three in his last six fights, people still give him mega respect like he's, you know, 64-1 and one or something. I mean, you know, Randy is a great fighter. And, you know, maybe there's people in the public that are dogging him. I have not heard that. But, you know, I think as far as the media, the, the media at large, most of the media gives Randy a lot of respect and thinks he is an elite fighter. When this fight was uh, first announced, I know uh, some of the media was like, eh, you know, the two old guys, what significance does it hold? But I think, you know, as it builds in time here, it is significant. And I'll tell you, I think the story on Coleman's side is at 45, maybe he's finally dedicated. And who knows, maybe he can pull the upset. Yeah, I mean, you know, Coleman is more of a question mark than Randy is. I mean, Randy, you know, comes off a, a good fight over Brandon Vera. You know, you can say whatever you want, who you thought won the fight. It was a close fight, you know. It, but, you know, Randy's coming off a very good fight with a young, athletic, light heavyweight. So, you know, no issue there. He had a good fight with uh, Antonio Rodrigo Noguera, the fight before that. So clearly Randy still has a lot to offer. Coleman is the guy that to me is the question mark. You know, and my argument about this fight is not, you know, that I don't want to see Mark Coleman fighting. Is did he actually earn this fight? You know, who did he beat to get a fight with Randy Couture? You know, they said on the uh, day is beating Randy Couture still means something, but to get the chance to beat Randy Couture, you should have to beat somebody a little better than what he beat. He, he beat Stefan Bonner and it was a great performance, but I think, you know, you need one more fight in there, in my mind, before you put him against Randy Couture, because that's how I consider Randy Couture. I consider right. Randy Couture so elite that I think you need to beat more than Stefan Bonner just to qualify to fight him. All right. Well, my line of questioning a little while ago to Dana White was, um, I actually think they're being nice to Mark Holman. I do think mm, the charitable is a strong word, but I think they are honoring some of the legends. Hell, even down the road with Henzo Gracie matching up Chuck and Tito. Right. Um, and I understand from the uh, ranking standpoint, maybe it's not legitimate, but I do think they are showing a heart in giving Mark Holman a potential big payday and, you know, something to gain here. Well, I certainly think they did that at UFC 93 in Ireland when they gave him fight of the night because I don't care what anybody says. I mean, he was gassed in the first round. If you want to give him fight of the night because he fought through and survived, great. But, I mean, that's not what I expect a fight of the night to be. Two guys who are moving in slow motion and out of breath, you know, in the middle of the second round. You know, I just don't like that. Hey, you know, he fought through it, and all credit to him. You know, he was a tough guy, and, you know, he, he just had a lot of will to get through. But, he, you know, he, he, it was not a fight of the night, plain and simple. Um, you know, he performed a lot better against uh, Stefan Bonner, so he deserves another fight. Does he deserve Randy Couture? Again, that's where I disagree. You know, I think Randy Couture is ready for somebody higher than Mark Coleman. So uh, if he has a path to victory, what do you think it is? Can Coleman get Couture down? Obviously, he's got to get top control and get him on his back. Yeah, I mean, it's we're talking freestyle versus Greco-Roman. It's, you know, two different styles of wrestling. Um, you know, I think, you know, Randy's not the greatest striker in the world, but I think Randy has far better, you know, striking than, uh, than Mark Coleman. And, I, you know, I question Coleman's chin. I think if Randy hits him on, whether right on the chin, that, you know, this fight could be an early fight. Coleman's way to win is, like you say, he's going to have to get Randy down, get top position, and he's really going to have to pound him. But Randy is so good on the ground, and he's so composed that, you know, I think he'll, you know, he'll be able to defend that. So I think this is a tough call for Coleman, but I think it's, you know, it might be one of those situations where, you know, Randy misses a punch, you know, Coleman can get the takedown. Down and, and very quickly, uh, you know, you know, pound on him and hopefully, you know, have it end in a flash. We've got a great storyline developing with uh, Nate Markhart and Chael Sonnen, and the storyline is 
that uh, someone's going to get a title shot. Do you believe for a second that if Chael Sonnen wins this fight, he's going to get a title shot against Anderson Silva? I mean, he's coming from a little further down in the ranks, yeah. but maybe all this trash talk did work, but... Hey, Mark Hart admitted, I, I didn't think I was getting a title shot. Well, Yushin Okami, uh, you know, was a big win for him. He, he was very dominant over Yushin Okami. Dana White said he is getting a title shot. So, you know, you take Dana at his word. I mean, they don't have anybody right now that's ready. So the winner of this fight, I think, is the most ready guy to go out there. You know, Sonnen has a lot of good wins. You know, he doesn't have the great wins. You know, he doesn't have a win like Anderson Silva does over a Nate Mark Hart. He doesn't have a win over a Dan Henderson. But he's got wins at the second tier down. You know, beating Dan Miller was a very big win. Beating Yushin Okami was a very good win. You know, he's fought a lot of tough guys, beaten a lot of tough guys. You know, maybe not the top 10 elite guys like uh, Nate has fought, but he's done a really good job. So, you know, I, I mean, I think he deserves the fight against Nate. You know, I favor Nate in the fight, but that's why they fight the fights. Yeah. Well, huge odds. Uh, and obviously the key is getting Nate to the ground for Sonnen. He's got to have top control just like Coleman does. Can he get him to the ground? I mean, it's it, and it's a five to one favorite yeah. in the case of Marco, which I think is dangerous, but it's going to be tough for Chael to pull the upset. I think we know that Chael's going to probably be the better wrestler. Is he the better MMA wrestler? That's going to be a question. You know, I don't know. Certainly, Nate, you know, far better in submissions, and you know, Demi and Maya proved that uh, you know that Chael has a, a big hole in his uh, submission defense, and you know, he's. I, I don't believe him when he says you know he doesn't work on submissions. You know, he says he's a Republican <laughs> and he doesn't work on submissions. You know, I don't buy that. You know, I'm a Democrat, and I guess. I'm a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, skeptical of everything. But I, I think he works on submission defense. I just don't think he's as good at it as, you know, as he needs to be at this stage. You know, it's a Nate Marquardt fight to win. You know, I think in order for Nate to lose this fight, you know, Chael's going to have to get him down and, and beat him. And I think it's going to take a mistake from the do, uh, mistake by Nate for uh, Chael to do that. Uh, two other good storylines, too. You've got two guys I, kind of backs against the wall in terms of their rankings. Uh, if they lose this, then they really tumble down in their divisions. Damian Mai was right on the edge of a title shot, and so was Mike Swick. Mike Swick is an interesting guy because, you know, he got beat pretty bad by uh, um, Dan Hardy, and, and I really didn't expect that. I mean, maybe Dan Hardy is better than I thought he was. You know, I, I thought, you know, I wouldn't have been surprised if Hardy won that fight. I was just surprised how dominant he won. So, yeah, Mike Swick needs a win. You know, Demi and Maya, I think, is a little different position because, you know, Demi and lost the, the one fight, and, you know, he got caught with a punch. You know, anybody can get caught early. And, you know, so sometimes you say, oh, boy, he got really dominated when he got knocked out in, what was it, 21 seconds. But I think that, you know, knockouts like that are less than the kind of a wins that Randy Coach Tours had like you think a Couture's went over Gabe Gonzaga where he beat him steadily over a long period of time and pounded him into the ground. You know, to me that's dominating a guy. Demi Amaya didn't get dominated, so I don't look at his fight so much as you know a must win. But you know, Mike Swick, yes. Okay. Uh, any other guy on the card that you're most interested in for storyline, maybe potentially making a debut? I'll give you the one guy I'm intrigued to see. They must like him. He's four no, only four fights. 2008 champ uh, at 197 pounds and that is Phil Davis. Yeah, I haven't seen Phil Davis fight. I'm very interested to see him. You know, the guy, I guess you asked me, you know, who I'd be interested in, and it would be Philippe Nover, because, you yeah. know, Nover on the Ultimate Fighter looked so good. If you forget about the uh, finale and what's happened since, you know, just look what happened in the house. And forgetting Dana White's comments about him being the next Anderson Silva, just look at the fact that how he performed in the house mm -hmm. when he fought on those fights. He was devastating. And he hasn't been that way since. And I think it's a, you know, a combination of circumstances. I think, you know, a, a bad game plan against uh, Escudero. Uh, um, you know, then he lost the next fight uh, against. Uh, he lost to Kyle Bradley, and Kyle Bradley just got cut. Right. So I mean, you know, he has uh, he has some question marks about him, and I think he's a guy that has the ability. But he has to show it. And, you know, maybe it's one of those things, stage fright, you know, where he's not performing at the highest level. When the lights turn on, he can't perform. Right. Maybe he's a gym guy. I don't know. I don't want to tag him with that yet because he's still a young guy. But I do think that he's a guy I'm interested to see. And I think it'll be, you know, curious if he can perform to his talent level. Good job. Thanks, Steve. Hey, we'll be out here after the fights. Uh, Kevin and myself will have full coverage up on uh, Yahoo on the front page of MMA and on Cage Rider. And then we'll have a review of the fights afterwards. So uh, make sure you're back with us Saturday night, late night.